Bloody Island used to be called Bonapati. And Bonapati meant old island. And it was an old island for a gathering. It was an old island for like ceremonies. We gathered uh, medicine, uh, food. And you can imagine, you know, being out there in a the marsh, you know, an island way out there in a the marsh, how much food and fish, you know, that was there. And so uh, it was a gathering island. And now it's called Bloody Island because of what happened there. You know, and it's like not a gathering island anymore. And just like most of the land, like a lot of the vigilantes that came over and did what they did, there was 15 of them and 75 soldiers. Well, a lot of those, uh, if you want to call them men, uh, that did that, well, they acquired a lot of this land. Uh, like a soldier, uh, Kit Carson's uh, cousin, acquired all of Nice, where, we stay, where I'm staying right now. He acquired all of Nice. You know, I guess for his payment or maybe he just wanted it or whatever, you know. And and so like for all this uh, teachings that we've had for thousands of years, like you do not sell your mother. She's not for sale. Well, who was the first person that got the deed to my land, you know, and how'd they get it? It was either through like think something like Bloody Island or through shady land deals, you know. And now that's why a lot of our land is gone. But uh, Bloody Island is uh, is a sacred uh, place because of the 150 plus people that's buried there and it needs to come back to you know our people so we can uh, protect it. Captain Lyons they came out uh, bef before they went to the island uh, and to do all that massacre well they came out again they came out before that and uh, the Indians were on the island so they you know we can't get them but the Indians they knew our people knew that they were coming uh, they had they had like um, um, lookout people you know, and they would have smoke signals and say, hey, the, you know, they knew that they were going to be uh, um, dealt with like that because that's, that's the history. I mean, that's been going on for, you know, for years, you know, months or years. And so they knew what was going to happen and they gathered on the island because they knew the army didn't have no boats or the people didn't have any boats. And so they gathered on the island. Matter of fact, they were on the island teasing. You know, they was, ha, 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 you know, they didn't say that, but I mean, they were kind of like mocking these soldiers and stuff until these cannons came, you know, and then <clears throat> they, they brought two cannons and they put them on the west side on Emerson Hill and then they brought three uh, whaling boats and they started from Lower Lake and there was like 15 min men in each boat, uh, army men, and they came on the uh, east side of the island. And so when the cannons were being fired on the west side, well, all the Indians came on the west side, you know, and then, and then the uh, soldiers, the 45 soldiers got off off the boat and they just kind of like went through the island and the two feet <clears throat> some place in some places the, the water was only like three feet deep and so you could walk through there you know and, and uh, my great-grandmother they had this uh, hide and seek game and they would take this uh, tule reed and they would ream it out and I still gotta find out I'm still you know researching how they did that to make uh, what they do the, when they play hide and go seek, they'd hide under the water in the tulis, and they would breathe through this reed underwater. And and if you ever go out there and try to find a brown person in a, in a, in some water in, around tulis, I mean they just kind of like blend right in. You know, I mean they look like part of the the environment there, and that's kind of like what she did, and that's what saved her life. Her and her mother did that, and they were underwater breathing through this reed while the soldiers were walking through the water, and the ones they found, you know, they bayoneted them. All the little kids and women, they banned it. And uh, they would put the bandits through the arms in case, you know, the kids wanted to swim. They couldn't swim because their arms were messed up, you know. So a lot of the, all the little kids were bayoneted. You could think about this six-year-old girl and underneath the water. I mean, I've always wanted, if they're going to do a movie or something like that, I want to see when you're shooting on top, way up on top of the water, and then you see this little head coming out of the water. And this little head just going around and counterclockwise, just real slow. And you don't see nothing else but that little head going around all the way around. And pretty soon you pan out and all you see is dead people all around her and the water is blood, all bloody. You know, that's what I see. You know, this little girl just looking around and just like shocked. You know, what can this little 60 year old girl, I mean, you know, think? about seeing all of that, and then her mother hurrying her and hurrying her to swim, you know, swim, we gotta swim across the, you know, to the, to the uh, edge, and, and we gotta go up in the mountains and hide, uh, hide. And that's what they did. They swam to land, and they went up the mountains. It was May 15th, 
uh, about this time, you know what I mean, they, about this time, and they s went up to the mountains and they stayed there for about a month hiding. So this woman hid almost all her life, you know, hid all her life after Bloody Island, almost hid all her life uh, from the settlers, from the white folks, you know, the soldiers, they were scared, and, uh, and she survived that. That's why I'm here, you know, and, 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 in, and in that time, uh, they had laws, public, it was public policy just to go out there and cut my head off and sell it for five bucks. It was public policy just to sell me for 60 bucks a male, 60, 50 bucks so I can do hard labor for this, for the master, you know. Little girls went for about 200 bucks because they had equipment for these male farmers and the forefathers of California, you know, and it's like that history is just, you know, it, and the more I go through California and talk to different tribes, their history basically was the same, right, you know, same as mine right here and how they were treated. And so now, you know, what do I do? Do I continue being mad about that, you know, or what do I do about that? And I thought, wow, man, she had the key right there. This old lady had the key just to forgive, give it all back, you know, and, and uh, so I'm pretty proud of that lady, you know, that old lady. She's her, her when, I, when I talk to other people now, I always, I always say, well, do you think that's what Nika, her name, we, her, her, Nika means mother. And that's what we call her. Is this, this, is this what you think Nika and her people would have done? You know, I don't think so. I think we've been assimilated to be American Indians, and that's why we do what we do right now. If we were Nika, I think we'd have a lot more respect for the land, respect for each other. We'd be a lot more healthier, you know, and it's like we lost all of that, you know, and it's like, God, we got to turn around and go back here and grab some of that. The uh, the men they would shoot. They had muskets, bayonets, and cannons. Um, they killed a few with the cannons, but the 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 initial attack is when the men uh, there was uh, three boats, three whaling boats, and 15 men on each boat. And when they they got off the boat, and the chief Augustine again, his name's up there, he meets them, and he goes, "No harm, me, good man." You know, I, I, you know, I welcome you in peace. And as soon as he said that, he was shot. And the man behind him was shot and killed. And then pretty soon this whole havoc, you know, started. And everybody started jumping in the water. And that Bull Jim, the guy uh, was holding Charles Stone, he had one of these slings. He was fighting muskets and <laughs> cannons with this sling, you know. And, and he just kind of like took off too, you know. He, he couldn't really get, get any place with that. And then the soldiers, uh, their order was to put their, uh, their rounds on their shoulder and attach bayonets and only kill the bucks with the bullets. The rest, bayonet. And that's what they did. Most, most of the women and children were, and old people were, were killed, uh, were bayoneted. And that was most of the uh, people that was killed, mostly women and children. So. The actual numbers, uh, I've read so many numbers, you know. Captain Lyon says, I didn't kill over 60 people. Uh, some guy said there's close to 100, maybe a little more than 100. <clears throat> but the Indian oral stories say there was over 100, there was over, five, there was over 400 people there and close to half of them got killed. And so after the, the killing spree, and then my great-grandmother then went to, you know, went to land up the mountains and stuff, well, the Indians, and they took off, the soldiers took off. So the Indians came back and it took them about five days to gather all the bodies uh, all around the, the island and in the water and all that. And I don't even know if they gathered all the bodies because they still find skulls in like Rodman Slough. They found one over there at uh, uh, Buckingham and of kids, you know, little skulls of kids. So maybe some of them floated away or, you know. But uh, anyway, there's, uh, uh, there's a burial over there. They dug a big hole after they gathered the bodies for five days. They dug a big hole on the east side, they said, and they put all the bodies in there and they cremated them. So uh, part of our uh, candlelight vigil is to try to uh, do the proper ceremony for burial for those people that didn't have that. Or they just got put in the hole, burnt, then they took off and hid, you know. So there was really no, no proper you know, uh, prayer or ceremony for the dead or for the live. And that's why it's all unbalanced right now. Everybody's, you know, that's where all that anger comes in because we're unbalanced, I think. You know, they call it post-traumatic stress, but that's how I see it.